Okay, Senator Mitt Romney wrote an op-ed in The Atlantic on July 4th. And I, I, I think he believes he's sounding the alarm on Donald Trump in our country. The The article is actually worth reading because it's indicative. It, 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 it ties in with uh, what's happening in the UK with Boris Johnson resigning. So I want to read a little bit of, of this because Mitt Romney is obviously very much a never Trumper. He actually voted to impeach President Trump during the Ukraine the, the invented Ukraine fiasco with the so-called whistleblower. And this is what Mitt Romney writes about Donald Trump and more, more importantly about Joe Biden. He says, even as we watch the reservoirs and lakes of the West go dry, we keep watering our lawns, soaking our golf courses and growing water thirsty crops. As inflation mounts and the national debt balloons, progressive politicians vote for even more spending. As the ice caps melt, and record temperatures make the evening news, we figure that buying a Prius and recycling the boxes from our daily Amazon deliveries will suffice. When TV news outlets broadcast video after video of people illegally crossing the nation's southern border, many of us change the channel. So let me hit pause on this for a second. I didn't realize that Mitt Romney was so entirely bought into the leftist climate change agenda. Not just, not just their solutions to climate change, the political policies that they prescribe as the one and only fix to climate change. Socialism, if you didn't know, actually will solve the climate change crisis, according to the left. I didn't know he bought into this idea that fluctuations of our temperature are a crisis. There are fluctuations of our temperature. I'm not even disputing the fact that that humankind may be contributing to some of the fluctuation in temperature, but to paint this as a crisis of this proportion is simply unscientific. I didn't realize Romney was this bought into it, but he says, what accounts for this blithe dismissal of potentially cataclysmic threats? The left thinks the right is at fault for ignoring climate change and attacks on our political system. The right thinks the left is the problem for ignoring illegal immigration and the national debt. But wishful thinking, he writes, happens across the political spectrum. More and more, we as a nation in denial. We are a nation in denial. I have witnessed, he said, time and time again, in myself and in others, a powerful impulse to believe what we hope to be the case. We don't need to cut back on watering because the drought is just part of a cycle that will reverse. With economic growth, the debt will take care of itself. January 6th with a false flag operation. A classic example, Romney writes, of denial comes from Donald Trump. I won in a landslide. Perhaps this is a branch of the same delusion that leads people to feed money into slot machines because I really want to win. I believe that I will win. Just wait. He says, when entire countries fail to confront serious challenges, it doesn't end well. He then says, President Joe Biden is a genuinely good man, but he has yet been unable to break through our national malady of denial, deceit, and distrust. A return of Donald Trump, Romney writes, would feed the sickness, probably rendering it incurable. He then concludes by saying, I hope for a president who can rise above the din to unite us behind the truth. Several contenders with experience and smarts stand in the wings. We intently watch to see if they also possess the requisite character and ability to bring the nation together in confronting our common reality. Okay, so I read this and I thought, wow, this is an incredibly dumb article. It, it adds nothing to the national conversation except what it doesn't say, what Romney doesn't, doesn't acknowledge here. And I, I, I've always found it fascinating to, well, to psychoanalyze these never Trumpers, especially ones who have historically been rather conservative people, because I wonder how can you miss, how, how can you miss what's right in front of your face? How can you, how can you see what the radical left is trying to do, whether it's through Medicare for all, socialized health care that would lead to rationing of care, government telling you what you can and can't have in way of medical treatment, whether it's the Green New Deal that would push us into economic socialism, whether it's critical race theory and queer theory in our schools that will destroy the nuclear family and the social mores of our nation. I, I, I have never been able to quite understand why otherwise conservative, whether it's pundits like David French or Jonah Goldberg or politicians like, you know, Liz Cheney and Mitt Romney, why these never Trumpers are the way that they are. What, what is, what is, what has gone haywire in their minds that would, um, that would blind them to the reality that Donald Trump is not a threat to our nation. The radical left is a threat to our nation. And in order to disrupt a threat, sometimes it has to it has to be bombastic. Sometimes it has to send mean tweets in order to break through, break through the monopoly of, of big tech. And that a nasty tweet is nothing compared to a radical leftist ideology that would take us back to socialism, that would transform our country into a Marxist utopia that would result in communism and oppression and tyranny and death. And 
I think Mitt Romney ex- it, it illustrates exactly what is missing, exactly what's gone haywire in the minds of these never Trumpers. And the, the word for it, it's actually a very tame word. It's naivete. They are actually naive to what we are fighting against. Because think about this. If, if, if you believe that Joe Biden is a genuinely good man, as Mitt Romney said, then you also, you don't believe then that he's pushing a Marxist agenda. You believe that he's just a misguided politician, a politician with good intentions who just has unwise or unprudent policies that that don't practically work. If you believe that, then your reaction to that politician and to his policies that you believe are simply impractical or unwise, your reaction is going to be very different. Then if you understand that Joe Biden, regardless of his history, has been co-opted by very radical leftists who embrace a Marxist ideology and that the policies that they're pushing are not misguided. They're not simply impractical. They're not just dumb. They are specifically designed to to fundamentally transform the United States, whether it is the energy policies that are specifically designed to cause gas prices to skyrocket to the point that even Biden admits, well, we have to let you, meaning you and I, the people, be in this kind of pain for long enough that we can shift our economy to this green energy economy you know, or, or the Medicare for all proposal that comes from the left where they simply don't care if you are not going to get the medical care that you need because they believe that, that the, the, the means, the means you not getting the medical care you need justify is justified in the end because government will have control. These policies are deliberately designed by those who don't want freedom those who think the United States is illegitimate, those who want to tear down our institutions and replace them with Marxist institutions. And so if you, like Mitt Romney, view Joe Biden as a genuinely good man, your response is going to be very different than you're going to say, well, those bombastic tweets are are uncalled for. This is not how gentlemen behave when gentlemen are having a debate. But if you understand that the mainstream media has been co-opted by these same Marxists and government who are trying to undermine our institutions to delegitimize our country in order to usher in Marxism, then, oh my goodness, who gives a rat's tail about a mean tweet when that mean tweet is serving the purpose of exposing this radical leftist agenda? 